Hello friends, uh, you may recall last time we discussed about uh, like introduction of uh, indoor air pollution or indoor air quality. Today we will uh, go beyond that and we will discuss about specific sources and types of indoor air pollutants. Okay? So, in detail we will go about uh, different kind of sources which are available uh, in micro environment, indoor micro environment and uh, different types of pollutants which come from those specific sources. So, in this we will have combustion related products like uh, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide or indoor particulate matter right and then uh, some second hand smoke uh, due to uh, like tobacco smoking etcetera. Then building material and furnishing related emissions may also be there because adhesive uh, okay, or those paints etcetera they also emit uh, you know building materials they also emit certain uh, pollutants like uh, asbestos, formaldehyde, lead or some VOCs volatile organic compounds. Then there may be some biological pollutants okay, like uh, dust mites or animal uh, allergens or moles depending upon you know what kind of environment is there, humidity is there or not all those then pesticides when we are using even for plants etcetera. So, those kind of exposure may be there from outside also from outdoor also some pollution can intrude in inside the uh, buildings. Okay. And then uh, some pollution come from uh, you know surface and those kind of radioactive uh, related uh, uh, pollutants may also be there. So, those kind of specific sources and pollutants we will discuss. So, if we focus on uh, uh, primary causes of uh, indoor air problems then you can see like uh, sources may be many even from outdoor like outdoor uh, emissions or outdoor air pollution can also come to the indoor because of like from windows or when we are opening doors etcetera. Unless it is very tight building exchange of air is there and uh, depending upon the outdoor uh, air quality indoor air quality can be influenced and from indoor emissions outdoor air quality can be influenced. So, this is two way process basic basically, but within the indoor environment like uh, you know cooking activity can be there and uh, depending upon the fuel uh, whether we are using uh, you know these biofuels or uh, uh, some solid fuels cow dungs or wood etcetera okay and uh, if we are using uh, liquid fuels like kerosene or lpg or we are using other kind of stoves so depending upon that uh, some sort of pollutants may come from the kitchen <coughs> well then tobacco smoking means those people in, in those families where people smoke so those uh, you know contribute to the indoor air quality deterioration because whatever particulate matter or other pollutants are being emitted they will be inside the house. Then you can have this dust like when you are brooming or you are walking uh, you know even then uh, you know those dust uh, resuspension is there. So, that is again another source of indoor uh, air pollution. Mosquito repellents okay, when we uh, are using some sort of these repellents nowadays. So, they also emit something uh, some particulate uh, pollutants also and some uh, gaseous pollutants also. When we do some paint related activities again some aerosols are there in the air because of those activities and uh, even uh, in future also some paint, paint can emit some sort of emissions depending upon what is the composition chemical composition of the paint. Okay. Then uh, like agarbatti, candle all whatever uh, you know source of the burning is there. So, they can contribute to uh, one or other kind of the indoor air pollutants. So, uh, the sources are like fuel burning, uh, combustion appliances, use of the tobacco products, okay. then building materials and furnaces. So, this, this is the summary kind of thing which I just discussed or products for household cleaning and maintenance, central heating and cooling systems and humidification devices they also contribute. Right. Then pest uh, control activities because we are using uh, some sort of chemicals. So, those chemicals also get emitted into the air right? and outdoor air pollution as I said it can come to the inside. When we uh, you know try to uh, visualize what is happening inside the building. So, if this is a kind of residential building, so uh, like dust mites etcetera from bedrooms that can be one source okay? and uh, like pet uh, dander because uh, our pet whether it is cat or dog they are roaming around inside the building and they can be source of some sort of allergens etcetera. Right? Then uh, you know this asbestos uh, 
and dust chemicals can be from the seats also then from bathrooms uh, because uh, several chemicals are being used and uh, moisture is there humidity is there so bacteria can also grow so those kind of virus or bacteria can be uh, sourced or emitted from the bathrooms etc kitchen can be source of different kind of smokes carbon dioxides and other pollutants living areas like if somebody is smoking in the living area then it can be a source of tobacco related uh, pollutants garage can be source of uh, like vocs etc when some leakage of fuel is there right and yard also uh, like uh, because of plants some pollens may be there and when we are using some sort of pesticides so they also come into the air as aerosols so all these are the uh, kind of sources of indoor air pollution in uh, household uh, related environment when we talk about like uh, uh, business or uh, uh, you know office uh, setting then different kind of activities are there to contribute to indoor air pollution like uh, photocopying machine is there so some emissions are there for of vocs when you are you know changing that uh, toner again some aerosols will be in the air okay and uh, then uh, again uh, similar like mopping and chemicals we are using so those vocs will be in the air and uh, uh, you know then if it is a laboratory then other chemicals utilization can contribute to indoor air pollution well so when we uh, relate the combustion products and their sources this is very uh, very comprehensive list like different kind of pollutants are there combustion products basically like co no2 so2 okay and nox particulate matter and they are emitted from gas stoves or appliances wood and coal stoves or fireplaces right or mosquito coils candles all those uh, may be the sources inside the house now if we talk about one by one for different pollutants so they have certain uh, you know physico chemical properties characteristics and uh, the dominating source also for each pollutant we will go in detail now like carbon monoxide okay this is uh, you know odorless uh, colorless and but toxic gas it can uh, go inside our body it can reduce the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood we can get unconscious even high dose can kill the persons right so this is a silent killer because it does not smell and it is difficult to detect uh, it uh, you know poisons uh, and it can kill well uh, then there may be certain sources for that for example you can see here all these kind of sources are there which contribute to the carbon monoxide emissions whether it is gas or uh, wood burning a uh, fireplace or car left running uh, in the attached garage so carbon monoxide is there in the uh, uh, these exhaust emissions okay all these activities can contribute to the uh, co emissions when we talk about nitrogen dioxide so this is uh, you know uh, the whether it is uh, no2 or no uh, these are having uh, negative health impacts okay and this epa national ambient air quality they have given certain standards and beyond that they are quite uh, toxic basically reactive and uh, the sources could be many again as like unvented combustion appliances gas stoves etc they emit lot of nox because nox emission is always there like co and co2 is there whenever you are burning something because nox has to be there when burning activity is nothing but oxidation and oxygen is coming from the air and in air lot of nitrogen is there so nox emissions uh, you know uh, excluding is uh, very very difficult unless you capture that and convert into something else uh, through catalytic converters etc otherwise nox emissions are there you can control many uh, emissions but nox emissions controlling is a very difficult task basically well from welding tobacco smoke kerosene heaters all these are sources for the nox emissions when we talk about the particulate uh, uh, matter so uh, they also come from different sources and you can see like when uh, sunlight is coming in a dark uh, place you can see different small particles which are detectable by naked eye but they may be very small particles ultra fine particles which are not visible okay very very fine particles nowadays people talk about nanoparticles also and they can go into our body into our blood also and if they are toxic they can really trigger some uh, very uh, chronic diseases okay and uh, there are certain uh, standards and we have to be careful that uh, the concentration 
whether indoor or outdoor pollution of these particulate matter etc etc should not exceed beyond that uh, standards but uh, it it may exceed depending upon the strength of the source right and then the size and shape of the pollutants of the particulate nature also govern the health impacts like pm10 pm2.5 pm1 they have different uh, you know range of affecting our health because they are respirable okay coarser may be removed by our nostril uh, you know this filter system but uh, small particles can go to respiratory system and influence our health as uh, we discuss normally about this then indoor pm sources are many whatever you know burning activity or we are working even then some suspension is there so all those uh, sources are there for particulate matter and the coarse particles uh, and the pm10 they have different nature as i said and they have different health effects so we need to be careful about small or fine particles basically like pm 2.5 and you can see the comparison uh, you know with this human hair uh, what is the size of these fine particles so you can appreciate these are very very uh, smaller or very fine particles which are difficult to uh, you know imagine or uh, look at and uh, visualize well ultra fine particles like uh, uh, 0.1 pm uh, 0.1 they are very smaller okay and they can originate from similar sources like pm 2.5 and they can pose very uh, you know threatening uh, like uh, more than uh, pm 2.5 okay uh, and uh, as it is very small particles and can infiltrate in our bodies to the greater extent so we have to be careful about the presence of these kind of very small particles and if they are present then we should do something to remove them from our indoor environment when we talk about uh, you know this uh, second hand smoke which is coming from like smoking activities so the passive smoking is there because even if you are non smoker somebody is smoking and in the air those particles those gaseous components are there you are inhaling and uh, you know that way again you are exposed to those pollutants which are dangerous to your health right so this kind of second hand smoke sources can also be there and you can see like uh, middle and high school students who have never used tobacco are exposed to second hand smoke that is the passive smoking around 15% are exposed inside a vehicle okay some uh, you know adults may smoke may be smoking there so this is not good thing then around 16% are exposed at the home okay and more than 35% are exposed in outdoor or indoor public areas where uh, people are smoking so uh, that way also you know nowadays lot of regulations are coming and specific places are there for smoking and public places are prohibited uh, uh, from smoking but still you know some uh, there are ways because it is difficult to control the uh, you know air pollutants they can travel depending upon the wind direction and wind velocity right so in totality if we talk about like pollutants from building material and furnishing then different kind of pollutants may be there like asbestos formaldehyde volatile organic compounds or uh, lead those kind of things so these are the you know different pollutants and uh, if we go one by one again so the asbestos is uh, basically uh, you know these are coming from mineral fibers and that occurs in rocks and soil but they may be like from seeds wherever they are present so they can get emitted uh, in the air and exposure may occur uh, when uh, these asbestos containing material is disturbed or damaged uh, in some way then the particles are released and they becomes in the air and they can be part of our respiratory uh, this uh, inhalation sources of asbestos uh, can be different seeds whatever building material which they are uh, using the asbestos okay so uh, those kind of tiles or seeds they may be there for uh, these releasing asbestos okay these heat resistant fabrics or packaging gaskets coatings all these they are using the asbestos so uh, means it is present there basically so it can get released from there formaldehyde can be there like uh, it is a very important chemical and uh, it is widely used in industry to manufacture building materials so again it will come from the building material basically right and uh, like different concentrations in uh, dwelling units depending upon the age of the building and the release of the formaldehyde can decrease with the time the temperature relative humidity all these you know influence the concentration into the air and the sources can be all those kind of household products like glues permanent uh, you know press fabrics paints coatings okay all these finishes 
paper products they are using uh, all those kind of uh, things where this formaldehyde may be present and they can come out uh, depending upon the temperature etcetera. Similarly, lead is present in different kind of uh, things like paints etcetera that is why you know this uh, nowadays unleaded uh, paint uh, is, uh, is becoming popular ok. Like unleaded petrol or unleaded gasoline uh, it used to have lot of lead content, but there uh, this uh, new policy came into existence because lead is very harmful for uh, this uh, memory growth uh, or brain growth in the children. So, it was reduced and uh, it is now very very negligible kind of thing right. Then sources of the lead can be like uh, you can see uh, scrapping, uh, demolition, disturbance of those you know paint related uh, things then the lead can get emitted into the air ok. And uh, it can be also through smelters or mines, old agricultural fields. So, there if it comes to the outdoor and if some uh, you know from outdoor air also it can go inside the buildings in workplaces. When we talk about volatile organic compounds VOCs, so they can also come from paints etcetera right. So, uh, you know like in, in indoor environment it is uh, 10 times more than the outdoors. So, this is very dangerous because uh, many people are uh, allergic to VOCs ok and this is not good for health. So, we should be careful about their concentration it should not go beyond the uh, allowed uh, or permissible levels. When we talk about like uh, categories of VOCs there are many like acetone, acetic acid all those kind of like butanyl or uh, carbon uh, disulfide and then ethanol or uh, methylene chloride ok all these are there which are having different kind of health impact uh, impacts on the body. And the household products which include these VOCs are like paints or uh, wood preservatives, aerosol spray. So, whenever you are going to have uh, like uh, good spray which smells good uh, in the uh, you know indoor environment, but it is not good for the health because it is having these uh, toxic VOCs. Ok. Uh, and then uh, these cleanliness and disinfectants they also have these kind of uh, VOCs. Moth repellents or air fresheners as I said, pesticides all those can be source of VOCs. And uh, you know other products of like building materials and furnitures, office equipment such as copiers, photocopiers, printers, graphics and craft materials all these can be the source of VOCs. Well, now if you talk about biological pollutants which can come from you know humid corners or moisture or leakage, seepage etcetera that kind of if thing is available uh, or present in the building that is not a you know healthy sign of the building right. So, the water damage surfaces, materials, humidifiers, you know, stagnant water they can be source of biological pollutants basically. And uh, you know like dust mites may be there if we are not cleaning bed seats. Uh, and uh, the bed uh, periodically if we do not vacuum it properly then these kind of dust mites may be there and they are very allergic and they have uh, those kind of effects. Well, uh, then uh, if you want to prevent them then uh, you should uh, go for better mattresses and pillows washing them regularly cleaning them properly ok. And uh, we should not have much clutter in the room where we are using it for longer periods. And we should not have the carpets basically if we are we cannot maintain it. Carpets can be a big source of a small particles or these biological uh, you know pollutants or dust mites etcetera if you do not uh, vacuum it uh, very regularly. So, instead of uh, you know carpets it is better to have the tiles ok you can clean it uh, regularly very easily comfortably. When we talk about like animal allergens so from like cats or dogs. Uh, from waste or their uh, you know hair fall all those can contribute uh, even cockroach etcetera birds many people have birds also. So, those, those are if they are in the indoor environment they can contribute these kind of allergens which come from the uh, their uh, you know hair fall etcetera. Then molds can be there as I said from uh, these moist corners or uh, these um, leakages or seepages related uh, uh, corners. So, you know various kinds of molds have different kind of allergies to people. Many people if they enter and this molds kind of thing is there they start sneezing ok their eyes get red and those kind of symptoms may occur because of uh, you know these VOCs as, as well as these molds kind of thing. Then pesticides may be there when you are using 
uh, for gardening etc. So, that can also go inside the building because we have indoor plants also and sometimes we use uh, you know pesticides etc. Right? So, the sources of the pesticides can be all these kind of chemicals which we are using to protect the plants and to repel the uh, you know those uh, unwanted kind of uh, pests etc. Well, uh, radon radioactive uh, gas can be released from the soil and rocks and the you know this is the second uh, leading cause of the lung cancer in adults. Okay? So, the ge geological formations of that particular area uh, can influence the this uh, radon presence in particular localities. So, uh, if it is uh, you know present uh, then one should uh, you know take care otherwise it can influence the health and later on even cancer related problems may also occur. So, the sources can be you know different uh, rocks or these uh, kind of uh, granite or shale or phosphate all those kind of rocks can have these particular uh, pollutants or uh, radioactive entities. Well, uh, so uh, due to the heavy density of the this radon they typically floats downward okay? it is often found in the basement buildings. So, if somebody is spending lot of time in the basement and uh, if you find that radon is present then it is better that uh, you make it uh, fully ventilated and uh, you know flush it out otherwise it may be very problematic. So, all in all we can say that indoor air pollution is a big problem and there are specific sources for some specific air pollutants which are uh, you know significant uh, in indoor environment and it can vary from uh, household to the office uh, kind of setting. And accordingly we have to uh, you know be careful about their monitoring and their levels and uh, they should not go beyond those kind of levels which can be health hazard. So, uh, the knowledge about these specific sources and specific pollutants of indoor air pollutants can give us an idea how to you know keep our environment micro environment indoor environments clean and we remain healthy because nowadays you know lifestyle is such that the most people live indoors. Uh, you live inside house then you go to the office you do sitting job etc. Uh, those who are not doing much outdoor activities. So, they are most of the hours of the daily 24 hours pa most of the part of this 24 hours uh, daily routine is in inside the houses or inside the uh, you know these industries or offices and if indoor uh, air is not clean then it can result into several uh, uh, diseases or health related problems. So, that is why it is very important and I am sure uh, you will go uh, for more information about uh, with uh, through the additional uh, resources like these references and you will learn about more uh, those, those indoor air pollutants which are uh, like uh, which I have described and you can get more information about that because it is very interesting and it is directly related to most of us. right? So, thank you for your kind attention and see you in the next lecture again. Thanks.